Hey guys, today I would like to give you a deep knowledge about ISO. This video is going to be helpful to everyone from the beginner to professional photographers and videographers. Back in the days, ISO was on sensitivity of film. There was no thing such as image sensor. So if you would like to change your ISO, then you have to finish your current film and change it to the different one. And of course, you've seen different numbers on the boxes like 100, 200, 400 and 800. That's ISO of the film. By the way, on a film camera with a built-in exposure meter, you have to set your ISO, but only to help your camera show you a correct exposure, which we actually know based on the shutter speed, aperture and ISO. And it was a very helpful tool because we couldn't just look on the screen and check with our own eyes like if the picture is underexposed or overexposed, right? But now we're gonna talk about digital. In digital photography, ISO measures the sensitivity of the sensor. ISO values were set by the International Organization for Standardization to indicate the sensitivity of a film in camera to light and later this sensitivity migrated to digital and it wouldn't be very interesting for us but any picture taken on a digital camera with any manufacturer at the same shutter speed and aperture and for example ISO 100 will be exactly the same in brightness as a picture taken by other camera with the same settings and ISO. It even doesn't matter if it was taken on a digital or film camera, the brightness are going to be the same. Now we're going to talk about the difference between digital and noise film. Again, for those who did not watch my first video, I repeat that digital noise does not mean the film noise. Digital noise looks really bad, but we all have seen those pictures taken on a film and they have a very nice looking grain. I use film with ISO value of 400, although the sun is constantly shining here in Hawaii and I could buy a film with a value just of 100 only, but I just love the grain of Kodak Portra 400. And my Canon film camera from the 80s allowed me to shoot at shutter speed up to 1 4,000th of a second and aperture f2 so I don't overexpose my photos. Many modern photographers even try to make their photos look exactly like photographs taken on film. You can shoot a clear digital picture with ISO 100 then add film noise in Photoshop or Lightroom or any other software. For example, like well-known VSTO filters. Those filters simply allow you to make your photo look like it was taken on a certain film. So once again, if film noise can look cool then digital noise, 100% of cases look just awful, so avoid it if possible. Next, we'll talk about native and basic ISO and dynamic range. This term is more common among people who shoot video, but for photographers it's also good to know. Base ISO is the ISO value of your camera sensor at which it produces the best photosensitivity to noise ratios and also the largest dynamic range. Dynamic range is the amount of information that is stored in the light and dark areas of the photograph at the same time. For example, on a cheap camera, if you take a picture of a person against the sky, then the person will be absolutely dark and you will not be able to recover it later. But with a more expensive camera, in the silhouette of a person, some information will be saved and at post-production we will raise the shadows and see the person. Since we have touched on the dynamic range, for example, I found a graph of dynamic range versus ISO on a Canon R5 camera. Here we can see at ISO 100 the largest possible dynamic range on the camera is reached and then it only starts to decrease with a small jump in the value of 400. So keeping ISO as low as possible is useful not only in terms of noise, but also in dynamic range. By the way, basic ISO doesn't mean minimal ISO. For example, many video cameras work at ISO of 400 or even 800, but they give you the opportunity to go down to 100 when you need it, but the picture will not be a better quality. For most photo cameras, the base or native ISO almost always remains at 100, but some cameras have an extended ISO feature and let you go all the way down to ISO 50 or 64, but the image not gonna be any better. By the way, I found information that all Nikon digital cameras have a base ISO of 200. It's interesting that camera manufacturers are generally will not share with you a native ISO of a camera or a dynamic range, which cannot be said about modern video cameras. In this case, manufacturers insert those values in the advertising and press releases, like new red camera have a 17 plus stop of dynamic range. 
Next, I will tell you what is your working ISO. You may have heard this term already, and in fact, it's very important from a practical point of view. In simple terms, working ISO is the ISO range of your camera that you can set and not be afraid that the image will be unacceptably noisy. For example, my Canon 5D Mark IV allowed shooting with ISO values from 100 to 32,000, and it also had extended values from 50 to 100 to 1400. It's all cool, but in fact only in theory, because in practice the working value of the camera was in range from 100 to 3200. I personally checked it myself, took photos at the different ISOs and determined for myself that after a value of 3200, my eye about to twitch and I just can't give the customers such nice photos. So I never used ISO more than 3200 on that camera. In general, you can find information about the working ISO of your cameras in the internet, but I would recommend testing it yourself immediately right after purchase, because everyone have their own opinion on the accessible noise level. By the way, on modern cameras it is possible to set the range of possible ISO that you can set. For example, you set the possible ISO range from 100 to 5200 and after that camera will never allow you to set more. By the way, it is important to note that different cameras will have different levels of noise at the same ISO values, but the brightness of the picture remains the same, as I said earlier. So for example, my first camera, Canon 5D Mark II, had acceptable level of ISO up to 800. Canon 5D Mark III I could already use up to ISO 1600. 5D Mark IV, as I said, up to 3200. On my first Blackmagic Pocket video camera, the working ISO was up to 800. On my DJI Mavic 2 Pro, I don't take any photos or videos with ISO more than 400. But some people say you can shoot a video on a new Sony A7S Mark III with ISO up to 10,000 or 20,000. Now let's talk about how the size of the digital center affects ISO. Or will it be better to say how the size of every pixel on the digital sensor affects the noise? The size of each pixel could be different, with bigger pixel you will have better sensitivity to light. Therefore, if we compare two cameras with the same size of digital sensor, let's say full frame, this is 36 by 24 millimeters, and one of them have like 12 megapixels, which means there is 12 million pixels, you just multiply 3000 by 4000, for example, and other sensor is going to have 48 megapixels, let it be 6000 multiplied by 8000 pixels. So we can actually see that every physical uh, pixel on the sensor is four times smaller than every pixel on the 12 megapixel sensor, and it can gather less light. This is why I can't use my Canon R5 with 45 megapixels with ISO more than 5000, but well-known Sony A7S III camera have a phenomenal performance in a low-light situation with just 12 megapixels. Now, when you already understand what is ISO, I want to mention the auto ISO function. It is available almost on all modern cameras, and specifically of my camera, it's turned on easily. You just need to move the value towards the minimum ISO, and after 100, we'll see the word auto. How it works? We remember that in camera, at each moment of time, the exposure meter measures the amount of light going on the image sensor. And the exposure value shows us our next picture is going to be good exposed, underexposed, or overexposed. So, based on this information, in auto ISO mode, the camera simply selects the ISO value at which the exposure value will be at zero. By the way, you can change the exposure value and put, for example, like minus one. So you tell the camera that you want each shot to be underexposed by one stop. And then auto ISO will be selected based on this preference of yours. And this is useful setting, especially for reporters. For example, when I shoot surfing outdoors, the sun goes in and out of the clouds and this is really annoying, because you have to change your ISO. But if you put the camera on auto ISO, then you don't have to worry again. By the way, one more small but important detail, again with surf photography. When I shoot surfers, I want the pictures to be sharp, so I set the shutter speed to one of 2000 of a second, or even shorter. Also, I shoot an 800 super telephoto lens that allow you to shoot very far, but these lens have an aperture of f11, so it may be even in the daylight I raise ISO up to 200 or even 2500. And there is important to remember that pictures taken at ISO 2500 during daylight hours with a bright background, such as the ocean in my case, will 
look better than pictures taken at the same ISO 2500 in a dark environment, because noise is a little more visible on a dark background than on a bright one. One more thing for you to remember, that amount of noise is also affected by the heating of the sensor. I'm not entirely sure how it works, but I think that high temperatures or add randomness to the movement of all particles and the sensor pick up more random noise. In general, almost no one pays attention to this except astrophotographers, because they want to get the clearest possible photographs of the stars on a black background, and upon closer examination, any noise in the dark sky become visible and it's very difficult to deal with. Canon even released their Canon RA mirrorless camera for astrophotographers, and they claim that the body is made of magnesium alloy which spread heat better, and their ambassadors generally advise to pause for a few minutes after each shot at a long exposure because the sensor gets very hot. Next, we are going to talk about how to remove noise from your pictures. Of course, it is much better to shot pictures with low ISO because every time when we do noise reduction we lose the sharpness of the picture. Also, I recommend shooting RAW because if you still have to denoise, then it's better to do it in RAW converter. Because RAW converter is like developing a film before printing. You can edit your RAW picture in Adobe Lightroom or any similar software, and here you need to adjust noise reduction and sharpening setting to get the best result. There are no specific universal settings here, so you have adjusted by yourself. For better results, I recommend to zoom in at least to 100%. Further, if you are still not satisfied with remain noise, then you can use third-party plugins. For example, Topaz Labs plugins. I found them more efficient than building Photoshop tools. While I was preparing this video, I looked at many websites what they say about the ISO, and I was shocked because some of them tell you like set your ISO to 100 when you shoot in a sunny day, set your ISO to 400 when you shoot cloudy weather, and 800 when you shoot indoors, or so 1600 and above when you shoot in a dark environment. But it's not that. After the first video, I found out that shooting in manual mode implies that you are constantly balancing between the settings. So if you went outside on a rainy day, that doesn't mean that you should immediately set ISO to 400. For example, you can shoot at open aperture, for example at f1.4, right? No, the night city you can shoot with a tripod and ISO 100. Just set your shutter speed for 2 or 5 seconds. If this video was helpful for you, please hit the like button, subscribe, Ask anything in the comment section below and see you in the next video.